Welcome to Two Wheel Oklahoma. Today we're riding up Highway 123, stopping in Barnsdall, then Woolarock, and finally back here at the Price Tower in Bartlesville. It's gonna be a great show. So pull up a couch, grab your helmet, and come ride along. Well, we went uh, riding down Oklahoma State Highway 123, which is this tiny little road that uh, basically goes from Barnesdall to Bartlesville. And my theory is that it's there because of Willowrock, because there's not a whole heck of a lot else there. So I guess you could sort of say it's the Willowrock Highway, maybe. We started out at, uh, on the western end of uh, Highway 123, which uh, is at Barnstall, at the junction of uh, Highway 11 and 123. Most, most of it's still left. It's kind of neat to go through the thing, and a lot of the old buildings and architecture still stands. It holds the distinction of having the only Main Street oil well in the world, which uh, was an exciting adventure to, to see the actual oil, oil well right there in the street ready to pump at a moment's notice as soon as the price of oil reaches $100 a barrel. Which was very anticlimactic. I think a lot of people probably travel there expecting to see something much more exciting, like, you know, like an oil derrick or some giant, you know, 12-story structure or something, but it's really just this tiny little pump jack there with a fence around it. And this warning sign that says it could start at any moment. <laughs> but it's pretty obvious that it's been oh, many moments since it's ever started. We decided we'd take us a ride up Oklahoma State Highway 123 today. And uh, Barnstall's where it begins. And so that's why we stopped here in Barnstall, home of America's only Bain Street oil well. Legend has it that this was the first oil well that was struck here in Barnstall, which back then was called Big Heart. But uh, then they, they sold out when the oil company moved here and they called it Barnstall. But there's some people that claim that they built the street around the oil well. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but. It's too bad the dairy go round isn't still open because they had really good Frio pie. Is that the dairy go round? Yeah, that was the dairy go round. Was the dairy go round. It's closed now. What's the dairy go round? It's, it was like, you know, like a tasty freeze thing, like a hamburger joint, but mm. they had Frito pie. You know, I'm not so sure this is still operational. It looks like it's been a while since it. Yeah. One the, never knows, though. It belt. could start automatically at any minute. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Wait for it. No, it's not started yet. Not happening. OK, let's head on. So guys, what did the cop have to say? Oh, he just offered us a donut. And Asked us what we were doing. We told them we were filming us a TV show. Hey, we're right friendly here in Barnstall. I never got any donuts. We headed out of Barnstall and uh, went up 123 and stopped at Willowrock.
So as you're coming into Willow Rock, you get to drive through the all the area with these animals, and the, the most of them uh, were just free roaming through there that were contained with cattle guards. Just the drive in uh, uh, through the the you know critters roaming around all over the place and and dodging the buffalo poo on the road, and it's uh, it's kind of a cool experience just getting from the highway up to the lodge. Had everything from the, the emus and llamas and ostriches just to the bison. They've got all sorts of uh, like bighorn elk and, and these like like tiny little Japanese elk or something. Three or four different kinds of elk that Rex was trying to convince me were Japanese elk because I think they were smaller. They're very, very small. Very small elk. Small elk. It's called Woola Rock for woods, lakes, and rocks. That's where the name came from. I swear, it's true. I, I believe him. So right as we find this agitated bull, we notice the sign that says, that we're not supposed to leave our vehicle uh, because of the animals. And and uh, so I, I didn't know how that worked with the motorcycle. I didn't think that would help much. Well, we found out that that if I revved up the victory, the, uh, the noise would make the bull start getting kind of all uppity and <laughs> wanting to charge the fence. And uh, so that was kind of fun. We were hoping he couldn't get over the fence. Of course, right as we talked about that, and I looked up and Rex was gone down the road. Yeah, I told Brad there's no way that bull's going to jump over that fence. And he said, are you sure? And I, I lied and said, yeah. <laughs> but I thought that was worth sharing, sorry. Thanks for showing us around today. Absolutely, we always love having guests. It's a beautiful place. We're here in front of the Willow Rock Lodge, and which is uh, adjacent here to the Willow Rock Museum. When was this uh, hunting lodge built? He started this in 1925. Mr. Phillips was spending about half his time uh, here in Bartlesville and half in New York City. Okay. His original plan was to, to uh, build or buy a, a guest home on the East Coast. He didn't find what he liked, and so he came back here and thought this is the perfect setting, and it, it worked very well for him. Okay, and Willow Rock, where's the name come from? It comes from the words woods, lakes, and rocks. Told you. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so together that works just perfect. Yeah, there's a lot of all of those out yes, here. Yes, we beautiful. do all those things real well. Yeah. Can we go inside the lodge and kind of check it out? Absolutely. We'll take a quick look, uh, walk through this. Okay, cool. All right. One of the first things people see when they walk into the lodge, obviously, are the, uh, the number of animal heads that are uh, up on the walls. The, the interesting thing is Mr. Phillips himself wasn't a hunter. Oh, really? Uh, most of these animals lived and died here on the ranch. Uh, oh. And uh, natural causes. And uh, uh, he bought some uh, from uh, other people's collections, and he was given some as, as uh, gifts. It looks like a great party pad. I mean, they must have had some incredible soirees here, I'm guessing. Great parties. It's a who's who of, of uh, America uh, and really the, the entire world right. from the 30s and the 40s. Uh, if you look at guest lists, uh, you know, from Will Rogers to Herbert Hoover to President Truman. Wow. Um, I mean, it just goes on and on and on, the list does. One good story, he was buying so many animals that he became friends uh, with John Ringling of Ringling Brothers Circus. Mm -hmm. And uh, upstairs there's the poker table that if you could tell stories, history on that thing, it would really be incredible. But they had lots of, of serious poker games right. at that table. One weekend, Mr. Ringling was here along with others and the pot got bigger and bigger and bigger. Mr. Phillips ended up betting one of his oil leases uh, into the pot and Ringling countered with his circus. And Mr. Phillips won the bet. Oh, wow. And boys being boys, they played all weekend long, and he ended up losing the circus back to Mr. Ringling. So, <laughs> so about three months later, large box arrives here at the ranch. They open it up, and there's a card on top, and they open it, and it says, this is a reminder that for one day, you owned my circus. And in that box was that elephant head right there. 
So Mr. Phillips mounted it right up, wow. uh, right up above the fireplace. So a um, lot, of, lot of fun history like that. A lot, of, a lot of good stories, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What most people know about Willow Rock is the museum, which was actually just an airplane hangar to uh, store the Willow Rock airplane. The main thing I remembered about that whole area about Willow Rock was the shrunken heads and the buffalo. And the shrunken heads were still there. I believe they're the same, same heads. I don't think they ever replaced those heads. You know, as, as this museum that's got all these like really expensive valuable works of art and uh and but everybody wants to know about the shrunken heads the heads will need re-shrunk every five to ten years so they send them out there's special service for those very specialized market man i gotta tell you this is a really cool airplane hangar yeah it really is and it it's amazing what happened uh late 20s uh mr phillips sponsors uh, an airplane in uh -huh. the dull pineapple race here it is it won the race uh, it barnstormed around the country for a couple of years, uh, uh, just sort of promoting Phillips right. Aviation Fuel. Right. Uh, brought it back here, and he had to figure out what to do with it. Uh, and so he had his guys come up and build a, a stone hangar. Okay. And, and they put that, uh, the, the airplane in the stone hangar. Well, that's the first room that you walk into at okay. the museum now. Okay. Um, and as he collected more and more art, artifacts, uh, Navajo rugs, etc. He just started putting them all in that hangar. And, uh, and the, as he collected more of it, he kept moving this airplane further back, further back, further back. Here it is. So, so it sort of started the whole thing. What, uh, what's your favorite piece? I can't pick out one thing in this museum that is my favorite. I can't pick out one thing about Willow Rock that is my favorite. Really? I'm absolutely in love with this place. And uh, one day it's the Buffalo herd and the next day it's looking at the Remington. Um, next day it's walking into the lodge and, and seeing some of the memories that are in that place. Uh, uh, we, we talk about the magic of Willow Rock uh, and, and people think it's, that's just an advertising slogan. I mean, it, to most of us that's really a very true thing. Right. Um, I mean, there is magic in this place and, and you can feel it, you can see it. I noticed you left out shrunken heads. Well, <laughs> that was sort of a given. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I remember more than anything when I was a kid was that little, it's like a little animated Indian village thing. Yes. With the little, and, and we came back here, I was probably 15 years ago, and it was broken. It was out of order. Well, it's working now. But you promise it's working now. You okay, well, The good. dancing Indians are still dancing. Very good. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, I hope they dance for a whole lot longer. I do too. Here at Willow Rock. We've really enjoyed our visit, Bob. I appreciate it. Well, Thanks thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it. Thanks for showing us around. Thank you. Please exit through the gift shop. I've seen this band. I don't remember the, their name, but... Stay tuned, we'll be right back. On the way out of Willow Rock, we continued up 123, and it, it's... It's actually a fairly scenic road. It's, it's real wide open. Um, there's spots on it where you can look across and see for miles through some of the valleys. And it's, it's not really used much. It hasn't been built up much, so it really does look like it has for hundreds of years since the dinosaurs were there. So maybe we're talking like five or 600 years. We're come and go because we're looking for pies and such. Either that or I think Rex had to use the restroom. He's the older one of the two. Well, we sauntered down uh, Highway 123 and we're here in Bartlesville and about to starve to death, so we thought we'd find some place to have lunch. And we pass up your average run-of-the-mill franchises and supper clubs and steakhouses and outlet malls. 
And we're downtown here and discovered pies and such, which asks the burning question, what's the such? So we're gonna go inside and find out. Shall we? We talked to uh, Link, who's, um, his aunt does most of the cooking and his grandmother bakes the pies. And uh, Link kind of runs the, uh, the cash register and that kind of thing. And uh, he, uh, he filled us in on uh, how it all worked and explained uh, the secrets of the Sooner Nooner, which is, uh, I can't divulge the whole story there. But. My Nooner was pretty good. My sandwich was pretty good. A proper sandwich. You know just, just sandwiches like Homemade this. bread, toasted, extra bacon, <laughs> turkey. Simple and good. And uh, unlike some people, I just had one slice of pie. You gonna have some pie, Brad? And a coffee. Three pies, jeez. Three pies and a coffee. So, do you do you uh, do pumpkin, apple, pecan, or do you eat all the pumpkin one first and then eat all the apple one, or? If you mix them up, you always finish with the sweetest one. So. Oh, okay. So it's like a, a sweet a ranking system. thing. Very interesting system. I had no idea. Hey, this this was way better than Arby's. <laughs> Brad was dying to go to Arby's. Just couldn't shut him up. Ooh. Oh, let's go to Arby's. Let's go to Arby's. Okay, we made it up to uh, Pies and Such in Bartlesville. And I've, we've got Link Hampton, one of the owners. Um, I guess it's a family-run business. You guys have had it for a while? Yes, sir. It's been the family for in this location for 24 years. 24 years. Yes, sir. And it, tell me a little bit about the building. We've been wondering about the, the structure. Of the, the metal roof, yeah. 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 Um, it's kind of hard to find out some of those those old facts, but what we do know about this building, it's a Sears and Roebuck Preen manufactured one of those, those diners from back in the late 20s, early 30s. Um, everything else that you see on the outside was added on at a later date kitchen, some of the walls and stuff. We've got the habit of stopping a lot of these and, and found this and love the food. I guess you guys cook everything here. Yeah, yes sir. We do homemade bread, uh, homemade uh, soups every day. Do all of our homemade pies. The crust is homemade. Stay open all year round? All year round. We're just not open on the weekends. Okay. How many different types of pies or do you serve different types every day, I guess? Pretty much, uh, we have our staples of like raspberry rhubarb or, or blackberry chocolate cream and uh, coconut cream almost every day. Those sell really well, but like I said, during the, the holiday seasons, we'll do mincemeat or uh, pumpkin. Sometimes uh, strange combinations like blackberry and apple or peach and raspberry. Wow. Pretty much whatever you can think of. Well, and tell me the easiest way to get here. Well, if you're coming on 75 into Bartlesville, either north or south, you'll come to an intersection, Frank Phillips, you'll want to head west on Frank Phillips, you'll go over the Caney River, and uh, right as soon as you come into the downtown area, you'll see uh, Osage, you'll turn north on Osage, and we're right on the corner of Osage and 2nd. Okay. Well, I sure appreciate it. Uh, we love your food. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. We'll be back. I hope so, I hope so. Right. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you, we appreciate it. After we ate lunch, we, uh, we toured downtown Bartlesville a little bit and headed over to the Price Tower. Very interesting building, uh, only skyscraper designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. But it's a, it's a wacky building. I mean, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really interesting. And it's great that you know, Price had the, the vision to, uh, to build such a unique structure there in, in a small town like Bartlesville. We're here at the Price Tower and Deborah Woodall is going to show us around one of the suites that are here at the inn at Price Tower. And this is a really cool pad here. Right. This is the uh, downstairs portion of uh, one of our suites. And okay. when Frank Lloyd Wright designed the building, his vision was it would be a multi-use facility in that you could live here in some of the apartments that were built into the construction. There was also workspace, of course, for the H.C. Price Company, which was a pipeline company. Right. There was also a cafeteria for the workers. And downstairs, we had shopping space, so you could eat, work, shop, and sleep here. How are things up there in the suite? Fancy. <laughs> He's easily amused. 
the upstairs room of the suite with the uh, where the bed is and all that fun stuff. And uh, this is really a happening apartment. Who who lived? What sort of people lived here in 1956? Well, you know, some of the people who resided here were people who were employees of the Price Company. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of our more famous residents was a fellow architect of Frank Lloyd Wright's. His name was Bruce Goff. Right. And uh, he's done a number of projects around Oklahoma. Boston Avenue Methodist Church was a project sure. he was involved in in Tulsa. The Babinger and, House in Norman. And, yeah. Sure. Just. Uh, Lots and lots of Bruce Goff around Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he was one of the first residents to actually live here. Oh, okay. And he lived in a suite like this, maybe? Much like this. Very cool. This is a tiny elevator. That's what I'm saying. Can, am I close enough? Yeah, you're good. Can you? Because I can, I can get a little closer. I don't know. This is nice. What's that? I can't. <laughs> can't get any further away. We're here on the 16th floor terrace of the Price Tower. And from a distance, a lot of people think this building has green painted trim. But in fact, it's actually copper. And I see that it's been, it looks like it's been, it's oxidized and uh, uh, pretty heavily for a building this old. Uh, why is it so green? The building Frank Lloyd Wright has referred to as the tree that escaped the crowded forest. Right. The forest being New York City. Oh, okay. The building being the tree and its cantilever design that goes out like branches the, the, from the, the center of the building. Thing, you know, so we kind of right. needed some green. Right, right. And this is how we got it. But, but Frank Lloyd Wright couldn't wait for time to take its toll on the, to patina the, the copper. He had to help it along a little right. bit. Right, <laughs> little, you know, better living through chemicals, right? There you go, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> quite, a, quite a guy, that Frank Lloyd Wright. After we got through tour in the Price Tower, and uh, it was starting to get kind of late, and we decided to go ahead and head back home. So we had a great day today. We found some good food, uh, found a few things that I, I had not seen before, and a few of them I hadn't seen in over 20 years. The, the weather was perfect, and uh, it, was, uh, it, was a, it was a nice day trip, just uh, touring the uh, touring 123, and um, I'm glad we did it. It was fun. Hi, I'm Brad Matheson with Two Wheel Oklahoma. Now we're gonna take a side trip. Are you heading out to discover your own Two Wheel Oklahoma? If you're new to motorcycling, we always recommend taking a rider safety course. And that goes for you old riders that just hop back on, or what we call born again bikers. An organization called the Motorcycle Safety Foundation has created a curriculum for teaching would-be motorcycle riders the proper way to handle a bike. Their 15-hour basic rider course will give you the fundamentals required to safely operate a motorcycle. The bike and helmets are provided, and the only prerequisite is the ability to ride a bicycle. Many MSF rider course locations also offer classes for scooters, dirt bikes, and refresher courses for experienced riders. There's a fee for each course, but some insurance providers offer discounts for taking a riding course. There are several rider course locations throughout Oklahoma. Here's a complete list. For more information on the Motorcycle Safety Foundation or getting started with motorcycling, visit TwoWheelOklahoma.com. Oklahoma State Welcome Centers can provide you with a plethora of great brochures, maps, and visitor guides. But here's a hint on making the most of all that great stuff. Drop by before heading out on your trip. Instead of filling up your back seat with brochures, then trying to fumble through them while you're on the road, pick some up beforehand. Once you know where you're going, you can bring along just the brochures you might need. Plus, it's helpful to have all that information while planning your trip. You can visit websites, research nearby attractions, and plan out your route with online mapping tools. If you're not sure where the closest Oklahoma Welcome Center is located, visit our website for a complete list. We had a great time today. I hope you enjoyed riding along with us on State Highway 123. To learn more about the bikes we ride and the places we visited, go to our website, twowheeloklahoma.com. And once again, thanks for watching Two Wheel Oklahoma. Hey, check it out. We found our first buffalo poo. Somewhere there's buffalo. Product placement. I'm hiding the, I'm <laughs> hiding the brand of pop here, so you can't tell what kind of pop I'm drinking. Well, I
I think they all know. Kind of wiggling around. Are you sure that's not going to keep the sound from sounding funny? Yeah, I, I don't know. Please don't talk about my mic. <laughs> it's a small part He's of the sensitive. <laughs> there, there was a lot more interesting architect. Sir. Van. We. Saw. There is so much to see and learn about on all our trips throughout Oklahoma that we can't fit into just one show. So to learn more about all the places, people, and bikes on the show, head on over to TwoWheelOklahoma.com. There you will find everything you need to know about the history of the towns, the roads, and the people we meet. You can read up on the gear we wear, the bikes we ride, 